Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to r slash I don't work here lady, where a supermarket employee gets almost run over by an absolutely insane guy because he was told he's not allowed to smoke outside the store. And now, without wasting any more time, let's dive right into the stories. How dare you work here? Today, after getting off work, my housemate decided to stop by a local Christian florist slash gift shop to buy flowers for his boyfriend. He has a bouquet in his arms and is browsing through some other items when a man comes up to him. It should be noted that he's wearing black athletic pants and a t-shirt advertising the gym he works at, so he definitely does not fit the look of someone who works at this lovely store, where attire is khaki pants, white shirts and green aprons. Housemate will be H, crazy guy will be CG. CG? Hey you! H ignores him, thinking he wants someone else and picks up a box of candy. CG, I'm talking to you. H, what the hell dude? Finally, learn to pay attention. Can you do a bouquet with long stemmed roses and lilies? H, sorry I don't work here. CG, don't lie to me. I saw you here last time I came in. Now can you do the bouquet or not? H, I don't know. I don't work here. I'm just picking up flowers for my boyfriend. CG, incensed. This is a Christian shop, do they know what you are? H, one, I don't work here, second, who cares? CG waves down the manager. Are you aware what he is? Manager, yes sir, we do not deny employment based on sexual orientation, they have two gay employees. CG, but this is a Christian store, how can you let them work here? And he's shopping for his boyfriend while working. Manager, sir, he doesn't work here. CG, don't lie to me, I saw him in here last time I was here. H, I was probably buying my boyfriend flowers. Speaking of which, I would like to finish and leave. CG, and don't show up for work tomorrow, you're not wanted here. H bought his flowers and the manager discounted a box of chocolates for him. I don't know what happened to crazy guy, but he was still there complaining when H left. Guys, that reminds me that I really miss church drama. Please let me know in the comments if you want to hear some more church drama stories from Reddit. The angry old lady and the motorcycle. Okay children, park your butts on the rug and listen up. It's story time once again. Our cast of characters. Angry old lady, Judy Dench, me, Sung Kang and Steve. Steve. It was a crisp September morning and I had stopped at a local Wawa to gas up my bike and grab a coffee. I had my helmet flipped open, yay modular helmets, and I was leaning against the bike while sipping the warm caffeinated drink. I had the bike running to let it warm up while I warmed up as it is carbureted. I heard a shrill noise, almost like someone letting air out of a balloon while pinching the end. Angry old lady, Sir, sir, your washroom is atrocious and I need it cleaned immediately. I shook my head, feeling sorry for the poor worker who had attracted the wrath of the AOL. Turning back to my coffee, I took another sip of that awesome French vanilla roast. Then I heard it again, closer, that shrill voice. AOL, young man, shut that infernal machine off at once and come clean the ladies room. At this point, I sir missed that she meant me. I shut the bike down, then smiled as politely as I could from behind the coffee at my lips. Me? Oh, my apologies, I don't work for Wawa. Look for a person in a neon vest or an orange shirt. AOL, with an exasperated sigh. Why are young people so lazy these days? I began the process of restarting the bike, only to have her shuffle over and attempt to push my bike over. Well, with me leaning against it and her pushing it towards me, it was not going anywhere. Even with all of her 90 pounds of fury. Me, ma'am, please remove your hands from my bike. I need to get to work and I have a long ride. I would appreciate riding with no damage. If you continue, I will call the police for assault. AOL, still shoving the bike. This thing is loud and obnoxious. Go clean, then you can go to work. At this point I had enough and I twisted the throttle letting all 250ccs of fury scream through the stock exhaust. The angry old lady backed off long enough for me to get my leg over and I dropped my coffee right there and backed out. She was still shambling after me as I kicked it into first and left. 
so my sincere apologies go out to the worker that both now had to deal with an irate old lady and also clean up my coffee mess. Steve, I hope you can forgive me. I think I asked this before, but since I have more subs now I'm curious, do any of you guys and girls also ride motorcycles? If you do, please tell me in the comments which one you are riding. But anyway, let's continue. I got fired, then a job offer and now an old crazy lady is on the internet. Hi everyone, long time lurker here, but I finally have a story for you. This story takes place in a grocery store, where I recently stopped to pick up a couple last minute items for dinner. Personally, I hate shopping, but rarely have to do it, because my wife generally does not mind. We only needed a few items for dinner, so I agreed to stop by on the way home from work. As I am browsing for the perfect rice to pair with dinner, this older lady approaches me, our conversation went something like this. Old lady, where's the soy sauce? I need soy sauce. I looked around and since we were the only two people in the aisle, I realized she was talking to me. Normally, I have no problem helping people, especially older people, but this lady used such a rude and entitled tone and I was not going to have it. Me? Excuse me? Old lady? Soy sauce, go get me a bottle. Me? I'm sorry ma'am, I don't work here. Old lady? Yes you do, go get me a bottle of soy sauce. Me? Um, I don't work here, I don't mind helping you out, but you need to ask nicely. Old lady? Yes you do work here, no. Please, go get me a bottle of soy sauce before I tell your manager. Me? That was a little better, but I'm still not going to get that for you until you acknowledge that I don't work here. And that I'm doing you a favor. Old lady. So you're not going to get it? At this point, I had picked out some rice that would work for dinner and I put it in my shopping basket. I looked at my basket and then I looked at her. At this point, I decided, screw this lady. Me? Okay, I will go get it. Just wait here. I will be right back. Old lady. Good. I was not going to get it. Instead, I went to get the last two items I needed while wondering how long that lady would stand there. To my surprise, she really did not stand there long. As I was finishing up at the self-checkout, I noticed her at the customer service desk in front of the registers speaking with the manager. This lady was crazy and I did not want any of the real employees to get in trouble when I left her hanging in the aisle, so I backed up my items and wandered over. I was a few steps away when she noticed me. Old lady pointing at me. There he is, there's the rude employee that would not help me. Manager. He doesn't work here. Old lady. Yes he does, I want him fired. The manager and I looked at each other, we had a short talk right in front of her, I told him what happened and that I wanted him to know he did not have rude employees. He was very apologetic to me, like it was somehow the company's fault, a crazy lady shops there and then old lady to the manager. So are you going to fire him? Manager. I don't know how I would do that, he doesn't work here. Me. You probably just need to look at me and say, you're fired. Manager. But you don't work here. Me? Yeah, but she doesn't know that. Manager looking at me. You're fired. Me? But what about my kids? How am I going to feed the kids? Manager is like, what the F is going on? Manager? You have kids? Me? Yeah, I have kids. And now their dad doesn't have a job and they won't be able to eat. Manager? I didn't know you had kids. Well, we do need help if you want to get started stocking shelves. Now I'm like, what the F is going on? Me? Just kidding, I don't have any kids. I was just putting on a show for her. Old lady speaking to me. See, that's what you get. After all, this lady still thought I worked there. Old lady. How's it make you feel? Maybe you will try a little harder at your next job. Me? I don't care, I don't even work here. I told you that back in the aisle. Manager. Yeah, he doesn't work here. Old lady. Yes. Cause I got him fired. Me? No you didn't. We just did that as a show for you because you're crazy. I work somewhere else. I've never worked here. Old lady. You don't work here. Me? Finally, you get it. Like I've said, I've been a long time lurker, but I knew this was the definition of a story for you all. Me, as I go to leave. I'm going to put you on the internet. I'm guessing something about old people not understanding the internet, but she did not like that. Old lady. Don't put me on the internet. Manager, 
Don't put her on the internet. Me? You're crazy and I'm putting you on the internet. Even though that manager was kind of weird, you gotta give props to him for really offering some random guy off the street a job. But either way, if you have watched until here, please don't forget to post some stars in the comments and like the video if you want to support me. But let's continue. Eight year old son mistaken for employee. This happened many years ago. I was shopping at the big bullseye store with my then eight year old. To keep him occupied, I kept giving him items to price check. Mind you, he was young and little. I noticed an older woman approached him with an item and he took her to the scanner and showed her how to check a price. A little later on, in a different part of the store, she saw him and called him over with another item. Again, he went over to her and price checked it. This happened a couple more times and he was never out of my eyesight. As we were leaving, the store manager came up to us and said the woman complimented his staff on their politeness and my son got a $5 gift card. As someone mentioned in the comments, I'm quite surprised that Karen did not add Great employees, but some of them look a bit young. If you don't move in 10 seconds, I'm going to run you over. So out here in the UK, it's been stupidly hot recently. So everyone is feeling super tired on our Thursday evening shift at the supermarket. We close at 8 o'clock and it's about 7.20 when the event started. I'm trying to organize the trolleys so I can lock them up in a little bit when a 30-ish year old comes out of the shop and sits on the bench opposite the trolleys. Okay, that's alright. Slightly inconvenient since it does not give me much room to move the trolleys but I will live. I walk inside after sorting out the trolleys to get these annoying industrial cable things we use to tie the trolleys and I see the dude starting to smoke on the bench. We've got a strict policy against smoking here since it's outside the door, hence why there's a big red sign on the bench but maybe he did not see it. I walked outside and informed him. Me? Sorry sir, but it's against the rules to smoke on the premises. There's a bench over there, points, where you can smoke. Dude, what the F, I've just effing bought your overpriced crap and I cannot even smoke here. Me? I'm sorry sir, but it's against our rules. Dude storms off somewhere. I continue to lock up the trolleys and collect more from each of the bays. Now I will be honest here, I'm not the strongest of teenagers, so when I'm pushing these trolleys I look like a complete ass doing it super slowly. I'm trying to push about 9 out of 10 trolleys up the slope, which is the car park going at 0.01 miles per hour across the zebra crossing when I hear beep, beep. Dude Get out of my effing way! Me? I cannot move since there's another car loading off an elderly lady which is blocking the crossing. There's a car blocking the way. I will try and be as quick as possible. Dude, if you don't move in 10 seconds, I'm going to run you over. I've dealt with crazy threats in the past but nobody ever does anything. So I repeat what I previously said about being as fast as possible. The man continues to beep his horn at an alarming rate. The car, which was blocking my way, was starting to move as I release the trolley brakes and start to push the trolleys when I hear the revving of a car engine and the car coming towards me. I ran backwards to get out the way when the massive crash of the dude's car colliding with the trolleys occurs. To cut the story short, he starts trying to blame it on me as my store manager comes out along with security. After days and a police report, the CCTV proved along with witnesses that it was the man's fault and he was fined around 1250 British pounds for the damage to trolleys. Oh, and I got a store gift card because they felt bad I had to be in the situation. In my opinion, he should have gotten charged for attempted murder because he tried to hit you with a car that could kill you. Or maybe you could call it assault with a lethal weapon or vehicular manslaughter, I don't know. The next story is gonna be from r slash tales from your server and honestly this subreddit has some amazing Karen stories. A Karen convention nightmare. I work at an upscale restaurant attached to a large convention center. We recently hosted a convention for a multi-level marketing pyramid scheme women's clothing company. I've never seen so many Karens in one place. 
not just figuratively, but literally. It was not uncommon to have two actual Karens seated at one table together. This is a particularly dangerous situation as this multiplies the Karen effect exponentially. The two primary Karen drinks of choice are typically either Cosmo or Chardonnay. It is from these potions that they derive their evil powers. Well, needless to say, the Cosmos and Chardonnay were flowing like water. The bar started to mix 4 to 6 Cosmos at once and pop multiple bottles of chart simultaneously just to keep up with the frenzied demand. Trouble was clearly brewing, this was the recipe for disaster. I can already tell this subreddit is incredible. As the Karens began to migrate from the bar to their respective tables for dinner service, the orders started coming into the kitchen. Naturally, everything was special ordered to accommodate their litany of dietary issues and whatever fat diets they were currently participating in. Keto, paleo, macro, vegan, take your pick. This is a trap. Special orders take extra time, are more difficult to accurately execute and bog down the flow of the kitchen increasing ticket times. This is exactly what the Karens want to happen. They were setting up the attack Little did they know that we were ready and waiting for them. We had called in the cavalry and manned the lines twice as deep. You could see the looks of confusion and dismay on their faces when their orders came out correctly and on time. We had neutralized the Karens. The night was drawing to an end before one particularly evil and vile table of Karens came in just before close. No doubt these were pros, not to be taken lightly. Coming from the bar, they immediately notified me, their server, upon sitting that they were very upset. Right out of the gate, they put me on defense. Inquiring as to the problem, they notified me that they were offended that the bar did not try to upsell them from the two glasses of Chardonnay to a whole bottle. This was a new move. I had not seen this one before. Being offended because someone gave you exactly what you asked for? Brava! I was not prepared for this expert tactic. But before I could offer a solution, the mecha Karen dropped the mother of all Karen bombs. I don't understand why the bartender did not offer us a bottle instead. I just want you to know that we feel very abused. Wait, what? Very abused? Very abused? I was floored. I've seen some Karen moves before, but this was the most outrageous and disgusting I've ever encountered. That's not a term you use because you pay $12 more for your wine by ordering multiple individual glasses instead of ordering a bottle in the first place. By the way, in case you wonder, the word that was thrown around was similar to the name RIPE just with an A. But I cannot say that word, otherwise I get demonetized. Anyway. You don't throw that word around. That's on you, Karen. Not even knowing how to respond to that and being short for words for one of the only times in my life, all I could muster was, well, that's certainly very strong verbiage. I will give you some more time to look over the menu. I left the table and immediately went to the manager, explaining what just transpired. I flatly told the manager that I was not comfortable waiting on a guest who was not only apparently intoxicated to some degree, but would also use such inappropriate language so casually. Shockingly, the manager agreed. She went to the table and let them know that they were welcome to place an order for food through her, but would not be served any more alcohol at that point. They thought they were pulling the mother of all power moves, but in reality they had overplayed their hand and crossed the line. The Karens knew they had been defeated. F you Karen. Welcome to KarenCon, where you are always talking to the manager. At KarenCon, you are your own boss. Can you guys imagine being venue staff at a convention like this? That would be one of my worst nightmares. But let's continue. The next story is gonna be from our own subreddit, where you can submit your own stories if you want them featured in a video. Anyway, this one was tagged with Pro Revenge by Stacy Rose, paying it forward to a family in need. Yesterday, I decided to grab a quick bite to eat at McDonald's, but since I was paying in cash, I waited in line to order instead of using the kiosk. 
while I was in line, there was a woman, I would say about 30 to 40 ish, with three kids waiting to order also. I heard this woman quietly tell her children they would not be able to get Happy Meals because they cannot afford it, but she can get them some french fries to share instead. The children did not seem to like this, but they understood. I felt bad for that poor mother, she did not order much, but then went to a seat with her children. It was my turn to order, I looked back at the mother sharing a soda with her children and them all sharing french fries and my heart sank. I told the cashier I wanted to order three Happy Meals and two Big Mac meals. She looked at me kind of surprised and asked if I was sure. I said yes and looked back at the mother. I think the cashier understood what I was doing. I sat down and waited for my food. When the food came out and since I sat next to that mom, I handed each one of the kids their Happy Meals and the mother her Big Mac meal. She looked at me shocked and said, oh no, I cannot accept that. And I said, oh, but you have to since I already paid for it and smiled at her. She started to cry and I just rushed to her side and hugged her. She told me that was the nicest thing someone has ever done for her and her children. I sat with them. The children were so happy to have their own Happy Meals with the toys that come with them. The mother and I helped them get their soda at the soda fountain and we just sat with each other and chatted away. Apparently this woman's husband left her and her children and took all of their belongings and cleaned out their bank account. He did not even leave clothes or toys for his own children. This made me so angry. I found out more information about this man, including where he works and I decided that after I was done here, it was time for the people he worked with to know what kind of man he was. I was not sure what I would do. I asked the woman if her and her children had a place to stay and she told me yes. I asked her if they had furniture or clothing and she said she had a few outfits each for her children but not much and they slept on mattresses on the floor. I gave her the number for a program in our area that helps out families in need with furniture, clothes and even toys. She thanked me and gave me a hug. I gave her my cell phone number and when we finally left I decided it was time to get back at this father for doing this to his own children. I made my way to the company he worked for and when I got there I found a man I knew that I used to work for who was a manager of that business. He asked me why I was stopping by and I asked him if I could talk to him about one of his employees and he said sure and took me in his office. I told him about how I met this woman and her children and how I bought them meals at McDonald's and how this woman is struggling to make ends meet because his employee, the jerk, took all their belongings including the kids things and apparently sold them. The manager was ticked, I could see it in his face. He thanked me for stopping by and asked for this woman's address. Now you see, this business this manager ran was a rent to own furniture store. I asked him what was he going to do, he told me he was gonna give this woman proper furniture but her ex-husband would be the one footing the bill for it. He was debating on firing him or just forcing him to deliver the furniture but he did not want the woman to get upset if she saw him. I told him I gave her the number for the agencies that help out families in need and he told me he does a lot of donating within those agencies. So we devised a plan to get this woman furniture for her and her children. I told him I wanted to go and get a hold of some of my family members and friends to see if there's any way to get toys for the children and he told me to do that and to come back in a few hours. I went home, made tons of phone calls, all of my family and friends agreed to help. My aunt went out and bought groceries for the woman while the rest of us got gift cards so that woman can get clothing and we picked up toys. It was so much fun picking out toys for three little kids and I could not wait to see their expressions. Of course, my family and friends all wanted to be there too, so I told them where to meet. When I arrived at the rent to own store, the manager and some employees were loading up the truck they have to deliver furniture. He told me the father of the children has been fired and he threatened to sue. My family and friends all helped chip in to load up the furniture and we were all excited to see this woman's face when we showed up. I called her to verify that she will be home and told her I picked up a few things and she told me they were home. 
Well, we all drove to her house, the manager and I knocked at the door and let me tell you, this lady was shocked. The kids were so happy to get new toys, even though some of them were actually used. The manager told her that when he found out about what her husband did, he let him go. He gave her his number and told her if she's in need of a job, he's willing to help her out. This lady cried and cried, all of us helped bring in the furniture and set it up. I've never seen people so happy to receive beds and chairs or anything in my life. It felt so good to help out someone in need. The kids were excited about having real beds and not having to sleep on mattresses on the floor anymore. They were enjoying their toys, saying how it felt like Christmas to them. My aunt loaded up the woman's cupboards and fridge with food while everyone else helped set up the furniture. My cousin donated a flat screen TV he had in his garage that he never uses so they could watch TV. My other cousin donated tons of DVDs, mostly kids movies, for the kids to watch on their DVD player he also gave them. We all agreed that this woman and her children are now unofficial members of our family. My little cousins were having so much fun just hanging out with those children and playing with them and they are all around the same ages, 5 to 8. The manager left after talking to the woman some more and told her to not worry that all of this was paid for by her ex. I stayed longer to just sit and chill and talk to this woman. I found out she likes a lot of the same things I do. I asked her if she was planning on going to that rent to own place to get the job she was offered and she told me she was. When I got home finally, it was very late, I got a phone call from a number I did not know. Apparently it's the man's mother and she was ticked that her son did this. She wanted to thank me for helping out her daughter-in-law and grandchildren and asked me to not tell them but she's planning on visiting them in two months once she has enough money saved. She told me that even though her daughter-in-law is no longer with her son, that she will always be her daughter. She told me that's how she got my number. We talked for a few hours before we hung up. I went to bed feeling very happy. And Stacy, you don't need to be sorry for your story being long, because I think I can confidently say that we all enjoy your stories. Thank you very much for posting them. And unfortunately, that was the last story for today. And before I forget, I want to remind you again that starting in August, beginning of August, I will be in Thailand for three months, so I might not be able to upload daily videos. But for August, I already pre-produced all the videos, so I will keep you updated. I hope you have a fantastic week and I see you again tomorrow.